Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you have for me. Some questions I found quite interesting, so be prepared for some unexpected answers. So, to start, a question from Scattergun. What got you into space? I've been into space ever since I was 4 years old. Sneakily watching snippets of the X-Files got me started into space. Oddly enough, it did not inspire me though. Instead, it gave me nightmares, which fueled me to learn more about space and what was out there. So I was never inspired into getting to know what was out there. I wanted to know if any of my nightmares were real. As I grew up, and I realized that they were not, I turned to more practical questions about the future, space, and technology to figure out where we were going to be in the next century. Next up are a few questions from Echo Masters. What was the inspiration for your size comparison of the universe series? Generally, by watching other size comparison videos that show off new techniques, such as Morn 1415's comparisons, I also find inspiration watching my own and thinking, I could do better this year, and going back and working even harder on a size comparison video. Finally, there are also the comments on the size comparison videos. All the positive comments inspire me to make more comparisons. What's your opinion on people who state you missed X and the diameter is Y? A size comparison video done properly is not an easy task. Each size comparison of the universe video takes me on average three to four months to make. Making a video with tens of thousands of edits is bound to lead to mistakes. I have an error checking method in place, but even still, some glaring mistakes do slip through. When this happens, in the past I have pinned comments, but unfortunately, YouTube is very limited in editing videos already uploaded. As for quote unquote, you missed X, seeing as any object in the universe can be added for a size comparison video, the answer here speaks for itself. The idea behind making a new size comparison video is to use different objects each year. If an object is omitted, it is intentional. What's your opinion on flat earthers? I do not think they are right, but I also do not think I would be able to convince them otherwise anyway, so I let them be. I do not see the harm in believing the earth is flat, aside from the obvious disconnect from reality, but it is not a viewpoint that I encourage. Will you one day make a response to flat earthers? If I get enough demand for it, I could. I do not currently have any plans to do one for now, however. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. How old are you? At the time of this video being published, I will be 27 years old. Do you have any subscriber goals? If so, what is it? I do not actually have any subscriber goals. The YouTube algorithm does not favor my videos. So instead of focusing on an arbitrary number, my goal with YouTube is to enjoy the video making process. My aim here is to make videos that both I and my audience can enjoy together. What's your opinion about mapping and its community? Personally, I think the mapping community is amazing. I am subscribed to Oli Bai, K Pard, Sherapashka Studio, Carrier Aptakan, Danzeg HT Mapper, and Yan Zishan. Their videos are extremely educational, entertaining, and well researched. I have always liked mapping, and those that have watched me from my earliest time on YouTube may remember my fourth video was a mapping video. As for the wider community, I mainly observe positive comments in the comment section, but I don't know much more about it. Have you ever felt down in your life? Yes, I do have periods in my life where I feel down or flat. What helps me in these periods is to realize that I will get through it and I think of something that I'm looking forward to, even if it is something as simple as a plate of food. Do you plan on making some gaming videos? If I ever end up playing games, maybe. I do not play many games. I could do book reviews if the interest is there, as I do read a lot. Most recently, I have read Spin by Robert Charles Wilson, Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson, and June by Frank Herbert. Kefkor asks, do you think the world has a future? This is a very tricky question. Technology is advancing at a shocking pace. A lot of what we thought looked futuristic just 10 years ago looks primitive today. An example of this comes from a video by one of my favorite YouTubers, Xgalba00. The video in question is one of a vision of the year 2050, and frankly, a lot of it looks like today's technology. I am skeptical about surviving the next 100 years. I think we can overcome climate change, major pandemics, and humanitarian disasters. But the chance of a massive nuclear war or a disastrous artificial intelligence release remains a real possibility. And these two technologies make me more pessimistic on our chances. If we survive, I will give a 50% or less chance. The next question is by Alistair, who asks, what year did you get into space? Building on question one, the year was 1998 or 1999? Perseus the Medusa Killer asks, Why do you call yourself Times Infinity? A bit of lore about my channel. I used to be called Is There Any That Hasn't Free? The reason for this name 
is because I was just trying to find a name for my channel, but I couldn't find one as they were all taken. So I just wrote, is there any that hasn't been taken? Times Infinity seemed a logical progression towards making my channel more professional because my channel deals with deep cosmological topics and existential topics. So the name was chosen because it seemed fitting and had not been taken. Fallen in Falaro asks, what's your favorite universe size comparison you've made so far? Probably the most recent comparison, size comparison of the universe 2022. Getting to work with one of my favorite music producers was a blast and I had a lot of fun making it. I think the finished product came out nice as well. What inspired you to make comparisons? It has a lot to do with my fascination with the cosmic scale. I love thinking about the end of time, the limits of space, and how intelligent as well as how advanced humanity could be. When you think of these things, trying to visualize is a very fun activity to do. What source do you find objects for your comparisons? Scientific papers, Wikipedia, from the top of my head, and surfing the internet. What's your favorite exoplanet? I'd have to say Kepler-186f. I love the idea of Earth-like habitable planets within a few hundred light years of Earth. We could travel and settle the exoplanet one day with biological creatures, and that is an exciting prospect. What is the best way to plan comparisons? For this question, I do not think there is a best method, but I will mention how I made mine. I start by deciding how big of a video I want to make, and then decide on how many objects to include. Following this, I begin to gather the information and do research for the video. Once I have a list, the objects, and some information about each object in the video, I gather resources like images, files, and videos, and then compile it all together. Following this, I work on the music and check for errors before uploading. What software do you use to make videos? I mainly use free programs, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Adobe Photoshop. Sometimes I use Audacity and with an Adobe Media Maker. Suwano so asks, how many bananas does it take to measure Jupiter? According to bananaforscale.info, the average length of a banana is 17.8 centimeters. So that means there are 5.61 bananas in a meter. Jupiter is 139,822 kilometers in diameter. So if we multiply 5.61 by 139,822, we get 785,516 bananas. This number just needs to be multiplied by 1,000 to get the answer. So 785,516,853.93 bananas are needed to measure Jupiter, which is more than enough bananas to set off a nuclear materials detector. Tarinko asks, could you give a brief explanation of how you made elements of universe size comparison in Adobe After Effects? I originally made the stars in my videos from a tutorial by Video Copilot, and I have tweaked them ever since. I look at real images of how the sun looks, and I try to mirror that look and motion as closely as possible. The software I use is unfortunately quite limited, and I think I have reached the limits of how far I can make the stars look realistic using Adobe After Effects. As for other elements, I simply find an image and try blending different effects together to get a polished product. Sometimes it works and makes it into a video. Other times, I just learn new techniques and discard the finished product because it is not video worthy. And finally, two questions from Space Mario 2. What happened to your old videos, such as History of the Universe and 2013 Universe Size Comparison? My old videos were scrubbed from my channel to ensure I did not get any copyright violations. I made most of these videos when I was younger, and I did not really think much about copyright back then. If you want to watch them though, I still have them in an archived Google Drive folder, so I'll leave a link to all my old videos in the description and comment section of this video. And finally, will you make a timeline of the future video, or video series just like old History of the Universe? This one is interesting, because when I decided I would remake History of the Universe series, I thought about making a timeline of the future video. What I have noticed, however, is that it is extremely hard to predict what will happen in the next few decades. If artificial intelligence exceeds human intelligence, then it is impossible to know what comes next with our current understanding. Therefore, I have not made a timeline of the future video, because I think it has become much too foggy to say with any certainty. And that is all the questions submitted and answered. Thank you all for the submissions and for watching. Until next time, Times Infinity out.